So I want to go over how to set up AOVs, um, which are basically uh, separate render passes. Um, Arnold just calls them AOVs. So the way to get to your AOVs is just in your render settings here. Click that and you have your AOVs tab right here in your AOV browser. Um, you just want to click on this built-in tab. It has all your um, choices up here. So we have our uh, diffuse here. We have our specular, uh, transmission, subsurface scattering. Um, so the idea is if you have in your scene and you want more control over your final uh, look, um, we create a separate pass. So if you don't have anything with subsurface scattering, I have subsurface scattering for my uh, clementines and my candles, so I'm going to create a separate pass for it. Um, but if you don't have it, there's no need to create a separate pass. So I'm just going to start setting up some basic ones here. So I'm going to do um, I'm going to diffuse direct and indirect. Um, so the direct is directly from my light, so from my light hitting the object, and then indirect is bouncing off of the different objects and hitting um, my object again. So uh, we're going to be able to add these onto each other. So direct plus indirect is just going to be our diffuse. So um, I'm just going to click my direct and just hit this arrow over. Click my diffuse indirect arrow over so everything in this uh, menu here is active and we'll see it uh, populate in this bottom section here so I want specular I'll do direct and indirect for specular 2 um, subsurface I'm just gonna create one for overall subsurface same thing with uh, I'll do direct and indirect transmission Actually, you know what, I'll just do regular uh, overall transmission because I don't remember seeing much of a difference um, in the indirect and direct for that specific one. Um, so those are pretty much the basics. Um, I'm also going to want to add a Z attribute um, for Z depth so I can add depth of field and post. Um, so for Z depth, I don't think you really need to, you don't have to have depth of field turned on on your camera and I thought that you had to have um, Z depth checked on under your camera but I just tried it and it worked without checking it on so um, don't think you need it you can just check this on just in case um, but I don't think it's necessary I'll just have it on just in case um, so Z depth and okay so let's just see what we got so far. Um, so if we go into Arnold's render, we'll be able to toggle through um, all our different passes. So right now this is our beauty render. And if we just hit this arrow here, we'll see all of the AOVs that we've already selected. So if we go into our diffuse direct, indirect, specular direct, specular indirect, Surface scattering. See, it's only showing my clementine and candles because those are the only subsurface elements. And then transmission should show only, only show my transparent object, which is just that um, that glass right there. And then Z. So it should show just a a white screen. Um, it's because we can only see the results if we lower the exposure. So if we bring it to something like negative 10, maybe, yeah. So negative 10, um, we'll start to be able to see um, these uh, values show up. So basically, the white is what is out of focus, and the darker subjects are what's more in focus. So completely black is completely in focus, and completely white is um, out of focus. So I'm just going to turn that back to zero. And OK. So there's a couple more AOVs that we want to set up. Um, it'd be nice to set up um, some separate passes for our lights so we have more control over that. Maybe we can change the color of our lights or the exposure of our lights in post. 
um, and also an object ID so we can um, use um, uh, the color match from our object ID to uh, what's it called separate our object so we have more control over adjusting individual elements in post and also admin inclusion we can multiply that on top of our um, comp so let's go ahead and add custom layer for object ID and then let's add one for ambient occlusion just call it AO and for all of these um, we want to make sure that our driver um, has merge AOVs checked so we just have to do this for one of them and should apply to all of them because they're all um, controlled by the same driver so we just have to go uh, to this arrow here go to select driver and the screen pops up and we just want to make sure that this merge AOVs is checked on okay so this is checked on so all these should be merged um, into one image now um, so we have our AO object ID good so let's open our hyper shade here and we're going to create a shader for ambient inclusion and a shader for our object ID and link them to these AOVs. So let's go into our hypershade. I'm just going to clear this. How can I clear it? Let's do clear on this one. Yeah. Alright, so let's create a. Um, first, let's do the ambient inclusion. Just type in ambient inclusion, it pops up right there. And we're just going to drag this into our AOV. So let's go to our let's go to the arrow next to AO. Select the AOV node, and we have this option here to drag a default shader. So I'm just going to take this um, shader here. I'm going to middle mouse click and just drag it. And make sure that you're hitting this um, box here so that the entire thing is highlighted. So I'm just going to hit that box. Boom. Ambient occlusion shader is connected. Um, so now I want to connect a shader for our object ID node. So let's create a utility shader. So let's go type in utility and an AI utility uh, shader should pop up. And for our settings here, um, for shade mode, we're going to create a flat shade mode. And for color mode, we're going to pick object ID. It's all the way in the bottom. And then for color, I'm just going to make this a blue. I don't know if this changes much. If I change the color. I'm going to make it blue because I like blue. Um, don't know how much this affects um, the final output. but All right, so same thing. Let's open the AOV node for our object ID. AOV node. And then let's middle mouse click and drag this utility shader into this box and make sure this whole thing is highlighted when we do it. So middle mouse click, drag, make sure the entire thing is highlighted. Boom. So let's go back and um, see our render and see what's happening in those passes and see if they're showing up. So ambient occlusion, awesome. And then object ID, it should show a different color for all the objects. Awesome. So yeah, I don't know if the blue um, color that I chose really does anything. It just assigned a different color to every object in your scene. So that's all for those passes. Let's create um, let's create some passes for our lights. So the way that we do those is we're also going to add um, custom layers. So what I'm going to do is create a diffuse layer for each of my lights. So, or actually maybe RGBA um, uh, layers. So let's go to add custom and I'm going to create light groups for each of my lights. So each of my lights is going to be assigned a light group. So I have a key, um, a rim, and I have my HDR, and I also have a light that's just connected to my candle. Um, but I'm just going to call them uh, light group 1, light group 2, light group 3, light group 4. So I'm just going to um, first type in my attribute, 
so RGBA underscore and then just type in my like group so I'll call it RGBA like group one so that's my first one I'm gonna copy this because they're all gonna be the same name except for the last number so I'm gonna copy it create so I have this um, like group AOV right there I'm gonna add custom paste change to two, create and again, paste, change it to three, create, and again, paste, change it to four. Okay, so I have my four like groups here. So um, within each light, um, we can add these names to um, to an AOV group attribute. So I'm going to copy this first one. So this one is for my key light. So if I go to my outliner. I'm going to find my key light, go into my attributes. It's in the Arnold tab under um, our shape attributes. So we go into Arnold and find this AOV light group um, tab here. I'm going to just paste the light group one. I'm going to copy my light group two and find my uh, HDR. Here, same thing, find that, that setting here, light group, paste, light group two, light group three, I'm going to find my rim light, go into my AV light group, paste, and then find my candle light, that is right there, paste, okay, so I have, um, so these uh, names here should correspond to the names in um, the indi individual light uh, settings. So these should match up, and that should be it. So let's see how these look when we render. So let's go back to our Arnold render, and let's toggle through our individual light um, AOVs. So I'm going to select our light group one. Okay, cool. So that's just our key light. Light group two should be the uh, HDR, so this is kind of filling the scene. Light group three should be my rim light. Awesome. And light group four should just be my candle light. And that's light, light group four. Awesome. So this, this is just affecting um, my candle and candlestick. You can still see it's um, indirectly affecting my clementines, but it's, it's mostly affecting... Uh, the candle so let's finish with that so that's all done we have all our AOVs that we want um, we're ready to render out an image so in class I mentioned that um, we couldn't create a um, just a single uh, multi-channel EXR from our render view and that's true if we just do a regular render with um, our Maya render view but, because uh, you'll notice, uh, if you save an image, it'll just say, um, like, image file, PNG, JPEG, um, but we want an EXR. So if we render with Arnold Render, we will have the option to save as a multi-layer EXR. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So if we just do Arnold Render... Um, It'll keep calculating until it gets to the final image, but it's kind of annoying because you don't know when. Um, I don't know when it's actually done. It, it kind of looks like it's always updating. Um, so when I'm ready to render my final image, I'm just going to turn off progressive refinement so that it's just going to, you'll see black areas until it's done um, with the final render. So, oh, it's frozen. Okay, so I'm going to re-render and fast forward through my render, but you'll see that there will be black um, splotches all around until it reaches the final image. So I'm just going to hit play. Okay, so it seems like it's done, so I'm just going to file, save multi-layer EXR, 
and now we'll see multi layer XR and our save is type and I'm just gonna name it still life master zero four. Um, okay.